Hey everybody, and boy do we have a doozy today. We're going all the way back to 1984 to the very first Transformers cartoon. This thing, oh my god, I listened to it I don't know how many times to try to figure out what was going on. This is the first generation Transformers theme. It's wild, hang on to your hats, check this out. When I first was started listening to it, I, I was hearing the theme and I'm like, oh yeah, counting through it and feeling it. All of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, hold on, what just happened? Now, clearly there's some things going on here time-wise that are messing with this rhythm. It's not just a straightforward backbeat groove. Something's throwing it off. And it's so hard to hear that initial thing. Like, listen to this. Right? Transformers, more than meets the eye. Autobots please their where Autobots comes in, I'm like, wait, 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 what? I had to listen to it 20 different times and I could not figure out what I was doing. More than meets the eye. Autobots please their because the whole thing sounds like like it's just a big giant stutter. Like the drums sounded like maybe weren't sure of how this was supposed to go, and that kind of everybody seems like, okay, we're hanging on for dear life because this is a weird chart. And yeah, I heard it again in the outro sequence. Okay, something's weird there. I don't know what happened there. Now we're going for a ride around the circle. Okay, something like that. What? All right, nothing makes sense. This is really interesting and you gotta check this out. So basically, here's what it looks like. Here's what I came up with and I didn't spend a whole lot of time with this, but so, so bear with me here. So we start off, we have this. And this is, this is already where it gets messed up, right? So. One, two, three, four, five. to keep that going for a long period of time. The bass line's really telling here, and that's one of the things you should listen to. So if we go here to this, where this bass line comes in, check this out. Okay, so if we listen for that bass line, it can really help us understand what's actually happening here and it helps kind of guide us around. And so we can look and see, and pff, it's funny, it's, it's not in tune. So that sounds horrible, so apologies for that. Um, so we have this A minor. And then we have B flat major, half step up. And then there are five bop, 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 before it goes back. So to me, I don't know, it's a 516 measure. How would we break this up? I mean, I said 4-4, four, four, then 2-4, then 516 before going back to 4-4. Four, four. How else could you look at that? Well, 2-4, what is that in 16? Well, 2-4 would be 4-8, would be 8-16. This is so dumb. 8-16 <laughs> plus 5 would be 1316. So that 24 plus 516 could be 1316. I don't know why that would seem to me more difficult to read. I would much prefer to see that division, that even division of two quarter note beats that are denoted in this 2-4 measure right here. So this is kind of where I'm getting at with like this, this whole thing about engraving and how we write out different stuff. I have no idea what the original sheet music looks like. I don't know what the idea was with making this so disjointed. It winds up just being confusing. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's like, it's an interesting thing to listen to, but it is like, whoa, 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 what just happened? It almost feels like the record skipped and it started over. Like, listen to this. This straight up sounds like the whole thing got screwed up and started over. Listen to this, ready, watch this. Starts here. Right there. It sounds like it started over. Two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. 
for one, but then two, three, four, one. There's just, it, then it, it goes away. So literally the first phrase has one sixteenth note dropped. For what reason? I, I couldn't tell you. No, one sixteenth note added. What am I, two, good lord. Oh, I understand, okay. It would have been a three, four bar. So the whole first thing would have been seven beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two. But instead it's, <laughs> it's seven beats plus one sixteenth note. How could you write this differently? Well, we talked about a few different ways here. You could write it in, you could write that second measure in 13, 16, instead of a bar of two, four and a bar of five, 16. But here's the thing with engraving. When you're writing out charts, if you're writing stuff that you want other musicians to read, I wanna divide this into even distributions across the measure so that other musicians can read it and visually it makes more sense. And I'll show you, I have a bad example in here of bad writing and we haven't gotten to this part yet, but if you look at this seven, four bar, that right there is not very good engraving to me. Now, some people might look at that and say, oh no, I actually prefer that because it tells me that this is the same rhythm over and over again until the point when it stops. Understandable, I could see that. But to me, I look at this and I'm like, well, my brain wants to see more divisions of this particular note structure. I wanna see where is this seven four measure divided because counting seven quarter notes just in a line with no divisions or anything like that within the measure, that's hard. It's very easy to get caught up and get mixed up and lose your place. But with this, you know, there's a few different ways you could do it. It might look like this, how I have it written here, or maybe it might look something like this. Now, some people might prefer the previous one because like I said, it's more uniform. It's easier to tell that, hey, this is the same rhythm over and over and over again, and that makes sense. But also, if you switch it over to something like this, now you can see, oh, I see where the beats align. I can see, here's a grouping of, four sixteenth notes, four sixteenth notes, four sixteenth notes, et cetera, et cetera, or two eighth notes or whatever it is. There's just, the beats are visually easier to pick up. This just opens up a whole giant conversation on various ways of doing this kind of thing, of how to engrave, this is the process of engraving, is how you're deciding the way in which to write something in music. This process can, can happen a bunch of different ways. We already talked about one way that we could have written a 13, 16 bar, but instead I wanted to make it simpler, so I did a two four and a five sixteen. I think most musicians would look at that and say, yeah, that's easier to handle because five sixteenth notes is easier to count than 13 of them all in a row. It's a whole thing of trying to figure out what's going on in a complicated piece of music like this. But we are gifted with this really interesting segment. Check this out. So we have A minor to B flat major, back to A minor, B flat major, and then the melody comes in. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so we go for a ride around the key circle there. Right? Check this out. Stock voicing, terrible voicing, but just for clarity's sake. I don't know why I played a major there. There's no major there. Anyways, yeah, once again, just major, uh, minor, major, and then. Whoops. So we go right around the key circle. Almost perfectly, right? Because the true key circle would go, would, would go there instead. So we're getting this motion, this two, five, one, four, this is kind of like a two five going to this minor key, right? Once again, how we talk about that is if we're calling the first little bit in C major, right? Two, five, one, okay? But now we're gonna move on from that. So we're gonna go to the four. And then now we are going to this home base. So we're gonna call B the two again. And so we're gonna do a two, five, one. So we have a two, Five, one, four, two, five, one to the minor. Could you technically say, oh, it's seven half diminished to the 
do subdominant third to the minor six, yes, technically. Or if we're, if we're calling the whole thing in A minor, we could say that C is the something else, you know? But we're talking essentially about functionality of harmony, right? And in the key of C major, we have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C. And so we're seeing all of these chords in that context. So D minor, G major, C major, F major, B diminished, even though this is with seventh, we call it half diminished or minor seven flat five. Boy, this video is just all about, hey, how many different ways can we refer to the exact same thing? B half diminished. Now this is the only one that naturally would be a minor chord in the key of C, but we flipped it to be a dominant chord. That's what we call a secondary dominant or a subdominant. And then we go to our A minor, which is again, a naturally occurring triad within the key of C major. If we're considering it all in C, what is that? That's something, what is that? something like that, or. It's everywhere, it's all over the place. And this is exactly how they did that. That was another one that I couldn't figure out for a second. Is the band just really unsure of themselves because of how weird this chart is? Or is it intentionally supposed to feel that much like a stutter? Cause check this out. Right there, that turnaround. There's a couple different ways that I can imagine feeling that, and it all depends on where you hear the downbeat. So we have. Now you could hear this. <laughs> like like it's a lead in, or you could hear it um, one two three four four or five six or whatever it is. You can hear it in a couple of different ways depending on where you're hearing that downbeat. I think when you reference the lyrics, it creates a clearer picture of what it's supposed to be, right? Because if we listen to the version at the beginning of the show that have the lyrics, the word is Decepticons. And the way we normally say the word Decepticons, it's like that first DE is kind of a a pickup Decepticons, Decepticons, the Decepticons. So the fact that we have the Decepticons, the Decepticons, it makes the the and the duh sound like it's kind of a pickup into Decepticons, the Decepticons, right? Check this out. Destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. So I think when you listen to it there, once more, and then you hear the horns in the background, especially, right? Right, so the horns play on Decepticons, ah, da, 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 right? So I think that kind of answers this question, which tells us that that part of the melody there. Four, and that's why I have it written here like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh man. So here's another question. Would this have been simpler to write in a, as a bar of four and a bar of three? One, two, three, four, one. You could write it like this and it would look a little different and maybe a little bit clearer. I've seen it written in like six, eight. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, which is technically fine. That works, that's correct. Because this would be like one, two, da, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's really just about what makes the most sense to you, what's gonna make the most sense to the musicians that are playing. Harmony-wise, it's just A minor, B flat, major. That's it. And then we have that one middle section. So it's not super complicated from a harmonic perspective, but from a rhythmic perspective, this is extremely confusing. And I think that's part of the reason why in 1986, when the first Transformers movie came out, we got a very different arrangement. This one is super cool, and I actually really appreciate how much it does utilize the original theme, right? So it's a totally different thing here in the beginning. It's so 80s, it's great. 
Oh, I love it. It's so epic. F minor. Okay, that's where we are. The theme is still the same. They're still using that same minor one, major flat two combination. They've dropped all of the stuttering thing that we heard in the 1984 version, but we do get that really cool around the circle motion in that sort of six eight um, Hollywood make kind of feel. And check this out. But they give an extra measure. And then they modulate. We've gone to here, we've gone to D minor. That's cool. So it's the same exact motion. But instead of resolving to F minor, we're leaving it hanging on. Now we're in a new place. Also, that stutter thing, chakun, 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 check that out. Yeah. That's cool. They use the minor seventh in that D minor chord as a harmony there, which sounds really nice. They cleaned up some of the weirdness of the original, and they kept some of the really cool components that Ford, Kinder, and Anne Bryan originally wrote. And the harmony is actually really simple, but super cool. And if you wanna learn how to get a really solid grasp on harmony, we have a brand new course that I'm so excited about because it is taught by one of my professors who is now the director of jazz studies at my alma mater, Purchase College. He is the guy that taught me, and now he's put a course together for you guys, and it's all about harmony. David de Jesus is a phenomenal teacher. He's one of the most impactful professor that I had in school. And right now we are running a brand new 50% off pre-sale for this course. The full course is gonna be out on July 1st, but until then you can get it for 50% off while we build out the rest of the course. And the full thing will be released. You'll get access to it automatically. You won't have to do anything. It's gonna be an awesome course. There's some stuff up there already. You can get a taste for kind of what Dave's gonna cover in the course. He knows this stuff so well, and I'm so excited to have him teaching this course. And I know you guys are gonna love it. No code necessary. Just click the link in the description. Go check that out. Get 50% off while you can. That's the greatest way to support the channel. And I'm so appreciative of your support. So thank you. And thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what other weird cartoons from the 80s, 90s, or literally whenever that we should check out that maybe had odd theme songs or something interesting that we should go over because what a bizarre tune. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.